What is going on guys? So today I've got an extremely special video for you guys. I got Sergeant First Class Demzel here. He's been in the military, the Army, for 14 years and we're going to talk about the enlistment process, the basic eligibility. Basically, when you walk into a recruiter's office, what's going to happen? All right, so in this video, basically, like I said, we're gonna talk about the basic eligibility for joining the military. I get questions all the time about joining the enlistment process, but I've got the most qualified person to talk about this, an actual Army recruiter, and he's gonna kind of take it away and tell you guys when you walk in the door, all the process, all the things that are gonna to need to be taking place. All right, guys, so the big thing that I can lead off with is be honest when you call us, okay? We're gonna find everything out. We have to know all the variables in order to make sure you're qualified to join the Army. Yeah. All right, the first thing we're looking at, everybody's a little bit different, but the big things we're looking at first is your age, okay? So 17 to 34 is what we're looking for right now. All right, other branches do take uh, up to 42. The Army's looking for 17 to 34 right now. 17 to 18 year olds obviously need parental consent before we can do anything. You have to be a U.S. citizen or a legal permanent, permanent resident with a I-551 green card, all right? You have to be a high school graduate or have a GED or have 15 college credits. There are a few other ways that education credentials can work out, but the best thing to do if you're not one of the standard education holders is call a recruiter and ask us. The next thing we're looking at is medical. All right, medical is huge for us. The big thing people think is, you know, hey, I had this condition in the past, but it's resolved. All right, we look at from the time you were born till now. Whether it's healed, treated, surgery corrected, anything, we have to know your complete medical history and make sure you're qualified for service. Law is huge, again, we need to know every time you've interacted with the law enforcement agencies. I don't care if it was sealed, expunged, dismissed, dropped, diversion program, paid fine, we need to know what you've done that has broken the law in the past. If you've ever been married, divorced, have a kid, uh, I don't care if you paid child support or what your situation, we need to know about all previous and current family members and dependents. And then the last thing we're looking at is testing. Okay, If you've ever taken the ASVAB before with any branch, if it was in high school, we need to know about that. And if not, we're gonna put you on the practice test to find out. We take all those different things and that's just your first snapshot of your pre-qualification. We don't really know until we start digging into the weeds if you're actually qualified. So be honest with us, come in and talk to us and we'll see what we can do. All right, so I wanna mention real quick, you guys send me a lot of questions about, you know, hey, can I get a waiver for this? Or I have this run in with the law, is that gonna be okay? Am I gonna be able to enlist with this? Or I have this medical issue, you know, you stubbed your toenail or something, you guys ask me the craziest things ever. Um, during this whole enlisting process, don't ask me those questions, ask a recruiter those questions. Talk to them about it. If you've had some alcohol related issues, if you've done really, like you said, anything, any run in with the law, you need to ask them about it. Don't ask me about it because I'm just going to tell you to talk to them because they know way more about this stuff. They know the actual army regulations and all this because just because the law says something on the civilian side, military standards are a little bit different. And then now if your prior service, is there any kind of different thing that you got to do? Yeah, absolutely. Prior service is handled case by case. So generally speaking, if you were discharged with a reenlistment code of one, you're probably good. You notice I say probably, okay? There's a lot of other things to go into. If you're getting disability, if you had a, a, a RE3 or any type of UCMJ or non-judicial punishment while you're in, what rank you got out as, how many kids you currently have, all those things are actually going to affect your eligibility. But again, Prior service is really case by case. So come in, sit down, bring your discharge packet with you, bring your 214 with you, and then any type of VA paperwork you may have gotten since then. Okay. And then the thing that I want to mention, since we're kind of talking about enlistment and basic eligibility, uh, we'll probably mention this as a misconception in a future video, but guys, what we're talking about right here, you're not, when you go through this, all this eligibility and stuff, you're not actually joining. So don't be scared to come in and talk to a recruiter and ask them these basic questions and have them at least figure out if you're eligible because that's what you need to do. You need to, before you figure out, oh, I want to do whatever, first figure out if you're eligible and the recruiters are going to help you out with that. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people think that as soon as they come in here, they have to be ready to join to come in here. I'd say 95% of the people we talk to either can't join or don't join for whatever reason, but come in and talk to us. We don't do contracts in our office. It's impossible for you to join the Army in a recruiter's office. All right, so now that you have figured out whether or not you're eligible or not eligible for joining the military, 
when you pick your MOS, like the career selection, how is that like? So the career selection for your typical applicant is non-prior service, enlisting in, not doing an officer contract or anything like that, is a guaranteed job in our office. So whenever you come in, you can bring your mom, dad, sister, brother, whoever your influences are, and the people you want to make this decision with, because this is a, a whole you know family decision on a lot of these younger kids. Mm -hmm. You bring everybody in the office, we sit down and we look at what you're qualified for and what's available. So if you're qualified via your ASVAB score, your medical and all your pre-screening that we've done and the job training seats are available, you get to go to MEPS with a guaranteed job in your hand. If your prior service, if you're E1 to E4, you pick a lot of your jobs at MEPS because they have to call DA and the Department of the Army and find out what you're qualified for there. And if you're an E5 or above, we do a great determination to find out what your previous job skills you held in the military was and if there's openings in the Army for that. But regardless of which way you go or what type of applicant you are, you do not sign a contract without a guaranteed job, guaranteed career in your application. You picked your MOS, you, you went to MEPS, and you went through all that crap at MEPS, it's super boring and everything. <laughs> uh, you swore in, what happens next? So after you swear in, you go into the delayed entry program. Okay, very rarely does anyone not go into the delayed entry program. That is only for prior service people that are actually staying in their MOS that are going directly to a duty station. When they sign their contract, they swear in, they're back in the Army that day, and they drive to their duty station within the next week usually. Yeah. Everyone else goes into the delayed entry program. While you're in that program, you work out, do PT, do training with the recruiters about once a week, once every two weeks, depending on the recruiting station. And then you wait and we prep you for basic training until your ship date. Traditionally, unless you have an outstanding variable, such as you're currently in school, uh, whether it be high school or college, you're going to ship within the next 90 days. All right. During that time frame, the key is, is all those questions that we answered and asked you moving up into you contracting, you need to keep those answers the same. Don't go get a new tattoo. If you get a new speeding ticket or if you get injured, tell your recruiter immediately because your eligibility doesn't stop once you sign a contract. You have to remain eligible through shipping. So if you go and get a traffic ticket, it's fine as long as we know about it and you've paid your fine off. If you get uh, injured, we have to make sure you're still medically qualified. So make sure that if anything changes, you get married, have a kid, anything during that time frame between contracting and shipping, we need to know immediately. Yeah, that's really important um, that a lot of people, I'm sure, might mess up on. But that's kind of the thing for active duty. Reserves and Guard, you know, you, once you swear in that first time, you swear in. But for active duty soldiers, when you guys ship out to basic, you know, prior to that, you're going to go through the whole mess process again where they're going to check all that paperwork and stuff again. They're going to make sure that it's the same. So that's really important. Like you said, just listen to him. If you screw up, just let him know. So speaking of the reserve and guard, so absolutely correct. When you guys sign a contract for the reserve, you're in the reserve that day. You don't have to go back to MEPS before you ship out, mm -hmm. but you do have to maintain, maintain contact with your recruiters. We're the ones that ship you out from the local airport, or if you're near the military installation, we're gonna drive you there ourselves. But you still have to maintain the eligibility because we have to verify through a hometown checklist that you're good to ship before we put you on the airplane. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. That is from start to finish a rundown of the enlistment process. So whenever you call that recruiter, the basic eligibility, you know, picking your job, going to MEPS and signing that contract because they reserve that MOS for you. And then the delayed entry program, make sure you stay eligible in the delayed entry program. Don't do anything stupid. If you do, make sure you let your recruiters know because when you go back to leave for basic training, you're gonna go through that whole process again. So we covered all that. We're gonna be doing some more videos in the future. We're gonna talk about joining if you're not a citizen. That's gonna be a little tricky thing that we're gonna talk about that people ask me a lot. So make sure you guys stay tuned for future videos. If you happen to be in the Huntersville area and you wanna to speak to these recruiters, because there's some great recruiters. So if you want some great recruiters, come over to this area. I'm gonna have their social medias and stuff link down in the description so you can you know reach out to them if you want to call them if you want to start your enlistment process with uh sorry the first class dimsdale here so that is gonna be it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it if you did hit that like button that'd be awesome if you stick out some more of my videos hit that subscribe button that would be even better if you want to catch these new videos coming out hit that notification bell button that's extremely important follow me on instagram and snapchat social media links are right here their social media links are going to be in the description down below as well I hope you guys have an amazing freaking day, and I'll see you later.